on. All right. Sorry, everybody. I don't know how computers work. <laughs> um, hello, and welcome to today's edition of our standards working group meeting. Um, we had a few action items that I turned into um, the agenda for this week. Um, you can pop on over to the Google Doc there uh, in the in the chat to see. Um, and I also put in a link to the previous agenda so you could uh, go and just read the um, discussion from from last time uh, if you if you so chose. Um, we really came up with. Uh, four different things we could do to kind of scope and um, make some progress on this uh, fairly large bucket of topics. Um, the first was that um, Richard and I proposed doing a basically a call for questions or comments or discussion prior to TC39 or TC53 meetings, or even W3C meetings, anything that we felt like, um, you know, we're ostensibly able to participate in as a, um, as a foundation um, and to gather comment and, and see what projects might be interested in bringing forward to those meetings. So as an action from that, there wasn't obviously any TC39 or TC53 meetings in the last two weeks, um, but we do need to come up with that list of, um, of meetings. And for TC39, they're usually planned well in advance as our TC, as our W3C meetings. Um, but uh, that, that's sort of what is needed to get that ball rolling, I think. Has anybody had any time to think about, you know, maybe what would be helpful in terms of framing ahead of such a meeting or um, what kind of um, outreach you would like to do ahead of those kinds of meetings uh, to, to our, our group? I haven't had any time to, to put some thought into it. Uh, but one thing that comes to mind is I've been thinking about this as, you know, what do we bring uh, for our projects and our communities to these uh, working groups and, and you know, um, committees and whatnot. Um, and a thought that I just had is perhaps even, you know, the flip side of that uh, additionally, that <clears throat> we can be there as a resource for those groups, I mean, as for, you know, for our communities, but uh, uh, to be a conduit back to our communities and our, and our projects, um, you know, if there are specific things like, um, uh, I mean, I, I would imagine this is a bad example, but, you know, uh, if there are time zone uh, stuff, then we would bring it back to, you know, to make sure that any time zone related to projects, you know, like, not the uh, I don't know. It's moments in our um, org. Yeah, Maybe. moments in our org. Message format. Globalize. Yeah, like anything yes. that we could, you know, bring back to them and make sure they're aware of. I, I imagine most of them are probably already involved and are aware, but just uh, I'm thinking about it as being uh, a two-way street as well. I like the idea of like of. Um, certainly reaching out around a um, topical area and like date time is one that you throw out as a great example. There's obviously one or two standards related <laughs> to date time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's uh, certainly, uh, certainly some of our projects were created to address gaps. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah, internationalization, you know, things like that. Um, but anyway, that's just a thought. It's not, yeah. it's not a one-way street. Um, I agree. So, I mean, I, I, go ahead. I was going to say, generally, I find this this kind of conversation or perhaps even thought exercise really interesting because I'm, I'm a, a delegate for IBM, <clears throat> and I'm 
you know, trying to figure out ways that I am bringing benefits to IBM by being a part of these uh, meetings and, and uh, the work. And so uh, I just find it really interesting to try and work through what, what, what value we can bring back to the projects. Um, yeah, anyway. Yeah, and and that's 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 part of the the thing I think that we're trying to figure out is like what exactly is the value to a project for participating as separate from like the a company like I like IBM it's it's fairly it's much more straightforward IBM has a business interest in these different things but an open source project um, you know may not have that kind of like capitalist motive um yeah um cool well so i think i think the action item here is fairly simple and straightforward um let's just try and 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 gather that list and maybe um use that to um start a calendar i think a calendar of events was another thing that we had talked about being cool to have um, so perhaps we can develop that for the yes, rest of the year and then try and get um, get the bones of that started for 2020 um, on that issue. Um, all right. That one was easy. Let's see. Next item. Um, we next action item was to create an issue for um, a a representative selection process proposal um, and so that we could and that's this is a proposal we could create to take through the CPC staging process um, we don't have this yet but Sindil has already opened some issues that are um, certainly related and supported, supportive of that. Um, so I may actually just copy or cut that and move that down. And do you want to talk about issues, um, the related issues 13 and 14, which are the follow-up action items here? Yeah, I think, uh, okay, so the very first question that pops out of the mind when we talk about uh, selecting a rep is like what kind of responsibilities or the requirements that particular representative should have. I think we have to consider how to handle the conflicts that comes in the meetings or whether the person has to be related to a project or he has to represent the entire open JS foundation as a whole. I think those are the few questions that we have to answer or we have to consider before even starting or find, looking for an individual who can be aware. Uh, I think that's what issue 13 is all about. Uh, it is exactly like a layout of requirements that is required from a representative that we are gonna send to all those meetings to represent this open JS project as a whole. Um, so I've just listed down two things that we have discussed on the meeting. Uh, and probably if we can, uh, if somebody has uh, anything more, they can add it in the issue or they can discuss it over here. Any other things that the group thinks that has to be inside there as a basic requirement for a representative? So I think that the, oh, I should pop the issue open. I think I saw it earlier where I'm not sure if it had, oh, dang, what did I just do? There we go. Um, me, I, I think another issue that, or another requirement is gonna be that the person is from a foundation project. Um, so uh, that possibly that they are, like a, a regular member of the CPC or, you know, they're, they're somebody who is known to and active in um, an existing OpenJS Foundation uh, project and not just like, you know, okay. randos on the internet. Um, it makes sense really, yeah, okay. And I, I think another thing we would probably want to um, assess is whether that representative is also qualified to be a representative. Let's say if like, you know, like um, I'll pick on Joe. In Joe's case, Joe would be qualified to um, represent um, 
IBM is a member at, at TC39, we would probably want, as because IBM is, is a member of ECMA, we would probably want to prefer a candidate um, who was not also, whose organization was not also um, a member of the standards org. Would you, I mean, that's, I, I think we've discussed that as something we, we all kind of agree is ideal, but I just want to make sure that I am not making. Uh, just to add one more thing over there, I think we haven't concluded anything on that. We okay. just discussed about it and uh, we said like we have to present it to CPC and then probably we can conclude it later. Uh, but basically the question still reminds like whether the particular person who will be representative of uh, the standards group, uh, Will he be, uh, if he is part of any other, he is he's a delegate from any other day, uh, whether do we have to consider him as a representative? I think the qualification, we have to add this as one other thing that we have to discuss. And probably I, I, do, I think that has to be answered, right? That's an interesting um, point. So to, some, to, if I, to capture what I think you're saying, like if in the case of, Again, sorry, Joe, we'll pick on you because you're right here. <laughs> Joe um, is also, um, Joe's going to say a TC39 meeting as a representative of IBM. Can he also wear the foundation hat um, at, that, at that table, uh, even if he's not the, um, the appointed Open JS Foundation representative. Is that does that capture what you're getting at? Yes, exactly. Okay. So uh, Maggie Pint has represented both Microsoft and Moment, uh, and a Moment really, uh, via the JS Foundation um, mm -hmm. on TC39. She's always just simply made a point of like clearly mentioning at some point during the meeting which one she's representing that day, mm -hmm. uh, and. Typically, it's not her employer; it's just, it's the foundation. So I've seen I've seen that work successfully, um, but I've also something that should also be considered is that the in the past foundations joining ECMA has been uh, met with some resistance because ECMA is concerned about companies getting a backdoor into standards processes without paying their their fees. Um, and in practice, that hasn't been a problem, but they're kind of concerned with the theory of it. So they would actually probably prefer that delegates from, from foundations be members in their own right as well, as a general rule. I'm not entirely sure that, that that's the case. Um, I'm going to put on my ECMA executive committee hat, which I wear on behalf of Boku. Um, <laughs> And just share that my interpretation in our committee meetings is that that is largely more FUD because it's not really clear what on from from ECMA's perspective what the OpenJS Foundation or or other foundation like a, a software foundation like us um, does and could possibly provide. Um, they're not, it's such a small staff and a group that meets so infrequently that, you know, frankly, we just need to come to the table with, you know, with some clarity around what we're doing and how we're doing it and how it's supportive of um, ECMA's overall mission and they're gonna be totally fine with it. Um, so sure, long, yeah. And, and yeah, and I recognize that for ECMA, that's more of a historical, fear and you know thing and less of a, a real a real issue but there may be other standards bodies that that have those concerns as well and so that doesn't mean they're not surmountable it's just something to be aware of yeah possibility for so i mean i think i think what we're getting at though is a super um important you know, point to capture, which is that we are being very cognizant of the, of not eroding um, ECMA's business model by facilitating some kind of surreptitious like backdoor participation um, in this particular group. And I think that on, on that's, that we consider that a concern would be uh, would go a long way to addressing whatever worries they would have.
Um, what other requirements would we think about um, here? Um, you know, I think, Jordan, you, po you pointed out Maggie. I've always thought Maggie is an excellent um, committee um, participant. Um, Well, and this is a, this is also something that's occurred to me. It's a little self-serving, but um, at the moment I'm between jobs and will be attending TC thirty nine in September on my own dime, and like would be happy to have the to represent the foundation um, and have them you know pay for my flight and stuff. But like I, I don't know where the how this fits into the things we've been talking about about can you wear two hats or where's there a conflict and you know and is there a conflict by me suggesting it or I don't know, but I um, thought I would throw that in there as well. Well, I mean, I, th I think that that um, topic of related to like requirements and what, what might be needed to know for on what we would need to know or what a representative would need to know for onboarding is like the, the process through which a representative be it Jordan or whomever is reimbursed. Um, and, and what kinds of things they're reimbursed for. So there's a bit of that like operational. Right. Thing. Well, and all expectations, right? Like I would like, if assuming that were the case, right, where let's say that all played out and I was then representing the foundation, I would want to know what, if any constraints and requirements were on me. Are there things I should advocate for that I might not otherwise, are there things I should not advocate for that I might otherwise do? Are there, is there like, what responsibilities will I have? Do I have to write up a summary afterwards? Like, yeah, you know, things like that. And like, it, 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 whoever a representative is, we should, to any standards body, we should be clear about all those things. Like reimbursement, uh, is there a party line they have to tow to in any direction? Uh, and like, you know, what sort of kind of homework do they need to do it as well? I think on the issue of like a, a requirement in terms of like, like post meeting follow up obligation, right? Um, I don't think it's too much to ask to have those people draft a either a blog post for the Open JS Foundation blog or a email summary for the um, projects list or some kind of presentation for the CPC uh, meeting about, you know, what was covered and, you know, try and focus that from the angle of this is what would be, um, this is what might be interesting to foundation projects. Yeah, it's certainly not too much to ask. We should, we would just want to probably be clear about that at the beginning. Yeah. I think the, I also captured those things on the next issue that we want to talk about. I think that, that adds the uh, roles and responsibilities for the representatives and things related to that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking about... Oh, I have both of these issues open at one time. That's cool. Go me. Um, let's see. Yeah, roles and responsibilities. Um, I mean, I think to Jordan's point about, you know, travel, there should be for, for, for planning purposes and long term support from a budget perspective um, it, it's probably a good idea to be able to say you know there, there's like a an upper limit on this like you know we'll, we'll send you to the we'll send a JS foundation rep, open JS foundation representative to um, TC 39 in New York but you know you're not gonna we're not gonna put you up at um, the Waldorf Astoria or something, you know, ridiculous and um, or, or that there's some kind of max. And things like that. <laughs> what was that? Oh, like, like, we're not going to pay for you to stay an extra weekend and have fun, that sort of thing. Right. That, that also right. seems like common sense to me. That, yeah. You know, we could use some sort of vague hand wavy language to just be like, expenses must be reasonable and then like, 
you know, we have some intent of just making sure it's like, uh, you know, market rates, but on the like less luxurious spectrum and, you know, things like that. Yeah. I, I feel like Node Foundation has, has successfully done that a lot with its like travel expenses and stuff for sending people to conferences and things. Yeah, I agree. And um, the, the, the reason I'm just sort of thinking about this to, is right now to square it with um, what is currently in place. Um, since the JS Foundation and the Node Foundation merged, the, the budget is just the travel fund for, for Node. So what we'd want to be able to do is say to um, the CPC, for example, we expect to send, you know, here's the calendar of events in, in the world of standards. And um, we expect to send someone to 10 events or send, you know, some group of people to 10 different events at a cost of $2,500 a pop. So that's, you know, X amount from the travel budget that should be sort of thought to be allocated um, or requested in addition to the travel fund um, for, for, for standard specific travel for a specific person. Um, uh, Miles is waiting for a promotion. Oh, by the way. oh, Miles, I'm so sorry. Yeah, promote to panelists. I'm sure he has something to say. Um, <laughs> Miles. <laughs> For what it's worth, all those messages came in a span of about 35 seconds. I was just having fun. <laughs> just the iPad and saw a big t number 20 on there. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, do you have comments and thoughts on that? I'm just curious. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I actually wasn't even paying attention. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> LOL. Um, no, we're talking about um, uh, just right now, issue number ba, 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 number 13 and number um, 14. See y'all later. Um, okay, bye, Jordan. Thanks so much for joining. Bye, um, Jordan. And this is the idea of like, what, what are we, if we were going to start to craft the, a proposal for the CPC process about a um, selecting a standards representative, somebody to represent us on behalf of um, the OpenJS Foundation to TP39. What are some of the um, requirements we would have of that in individual? And what are some of the expectations that um, we might need to make sure are made more explicit? Um, and we, we got off onto a, the tangent of um, travel. Uh, and and and, and setting expectations around um, uh, the, that budget and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess um, I guess like one question would be um, if the standards team would want to request their own budget to maintain for this, separate from the travel fund. And I think that's a good question. I, I feel right now that it's probably wisest to say, you know, these are the, like, let's take a look at the calendar of events and um, say we think it's important to send an OpenJS representative to every TC39 meeting and TPAC, for example. Um, so that's like 11 events and, or however many events at, you know, $2,500 a pop, then go talk to the CPC about whether that's like something that should be just requested as an addition to the travel fund or earmarked in the travel fund for, in the current travel fund for. Um... So, I mean, um, and you know, I'm going to take a slightly different approach. The travel fund is slowly becoming much more about the collaborator summit and mm -hmm. collaborator summit specific. And I know that there were concerns as we were going through the travel fund about whether, like whether or not other funds could become available. And it's just something that needs to be worked through and there needs to be, I think, an example of making these kinds of requests, getting this kind of budget approved by the board. Mm -hmm. because 
I don't think, and I please correct me if I'm wrong, that A, anyone needs to go and use this fund immediately or alternatively B, that like perhaps this could even be framed as like a 2020 budget that we're starting to request now. I think that it could be a really, really great way of leading and figuring out the kinks in the process of getting something like that approved. I, I would be fine to think about this as sort of early expert exploration for a 2020 budget request. Um, I think that's reasonable. I mean, it's August um, and I think if we work on our calendar and, and work on this process, like it seems like we could get that, we could get that done um, and explore it that way. I just wouldn't want to, I, I don't want to spook anybody by saying, by coming in and saying like, and now we would like $40,000, please. Or, you know. Yeah. And I, I think that like we could probably come up with like a range. I think also we do have reps that are maybe also corporate reps that yeah. could maybe kind of wear double hats. So we maybe wouldn't need the budget or the entire budget. So we may be able to just like grab something out of the air, like 10 grand, just say that's the budget and play it by ear from that yeah. um, and see if that's enough. Although I do know that like, you know, TPAC's in Japan this year. So you very easily dip a huge chunk into that just for TPAC. Um, yeah. But, you know, just because we ask for a budget doesn't mean we can't ask for more, especially once we've done it once, it's really easy to do it again. Um, so related to that point, and because you joined a little late, Miles, um, I was actually thinking that it would be interesting to see what your response was to this. We were talking about um, one of the requirements, like in terms of requirements for that representative, whether we should require that, um, you know, first off that the, the elected representative for us at a given meeting is a, a member of the CPC in a voting or a regular capacity, um, or is in some way clearly identifiable as a member of a project. Um, and then the second piece was whether that person, whether we would prefer or a person who did not already have some kind of organizational affiliation that would you know, say their, their company is already a member of ECMA, for example, um, can, would we prefer the candidate who uh, does not have, whose company does not have an organizational membership? So, uh, mixed feelings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, having someone who can go in and be effective takes time and relationship building within the standards groups already. And we can mentor people to build up on that. And those are probably like good to be people who have not already gone. But like if we have specific things that we need to do and specific kind of agendas that we have coming out of the gate, um, I think it would be helpful to have people who have experience. But you know, this always could be balanced and we can find a way to, to balance it out. Um, I think a lot of people in that room like myself, for example, are already entering into that space with multiple hacks and have to figure out how to juggle that. Mm -hmm. I'm less concerned about people having to have or not having affiliation being kind of one of the criteria of how we decide who goes. Um, regarding CPC versus non-CPC, this actually um, this actually aligns with something else that I wanted to bring up. I won't um, squirrel on it too much. But um, we've kind of been loosely using the term working group to describe some of these um, kind of initiatives that we're spinning up under the CPC. Mm -hmm. but we have not done any work on actually chartering them, um, which you know is a concept from Node, and we can decide that we don't want to do this. Um, but if we wanted to, if we wanted to move forward with having kind of official working groups, somewhat um, modeled after Node, if the standards group was chartered by the CPC, our group would be chartered with kind of making these decisions. And we could make a governance model that dictates, you know, what are the requirements for being a representative? Mm -hmm. and I don't personally think that being a CPC rep or a CPC voting rep um, should be a requirement. But I do think that, that our group being chartered and officially delegated with handling 
you know, this decision is something um, that we should do if we're going to be making those kinds of decisions. That's a um, really interesting point, Miles. Like, that's a different way of, like, maybe, um, like, worrying about this. Because I think what the way I've been going, well, to get this done, we, our group should come up with a proposal that we put through the CPC process for these different um, pieces of, like, you know, electing a standards person and da 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 but, you know, if this is something that instead the CPC would like to explicitly delegate uh, by chartering us as a, you know, you know, official kind of subcommittee as opposed to a ragtag band of misfits, which we totes are. <laughs> um, sorry to interrupt really quickly, but uh, Richard Gibson needs to be promoted. Thank you all. Um, then that would be, uh, that would be good. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I think like the, the biggest subtle difference between that would be like the CPC has a lot of other things that are already on their plate that they need to worry about. And what we're talking about is extremely domain specific. So I think we could just do that kind of blanket, hey, here's a proposal to charter an, a, a standards working group. It would oversee this, maybe even like our basic charter and governance is part of that proposal. And they stamp that and once it's stamped, then like we are, you know, kind of certified to manage this ourselves, which includes everything to like how we manage membership, how we decide delegates, um, basically everything. Because if you go into the CPC charter, the CPC, is chartered with handling this and then if they in turn charter us um then it's kind of you know our, we, we own it and, and with that also comes this kind of uh non-hierarch higher uh, hierarchical i can't <laughs> ever say that freaking word hierarchical it's because i hate hierarchy so much yeah um, <laughs> but like it sets up this thing where it's much flatter it's much more distributed and we don't need to go like ask the CPC for permission every time we do something. And if in fact, it makes it the thing where like the CPC kind of needs to consult with us to make any decisions that go in that space. And, you know, this does get a little bit, it is a little bit of like a mind mender because I bet you the majority of the people, at least in the room right now are all already involved in the CPC. But we will in turn approach it with very different hats. Well, Joe, what do you think is our um, chair person of the CPC? Uh, I've been kind of splitting my attention a little bit. I, I, if I understand Miles' um, thought, um, I think it makes sense to, to you know, have a charter stamp if, if that's where you're getting, getting to. Do I understand that right? I, yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the basic, the basis is, you know, let's um, put, put forward as opposed to put forward these specific um, processes to be owned by the CPC. Let's, let's put forward a, a proposal to, you know, kind of confirm this group as being able to make um, decisions on on these topics and manage it in the way that it needs to be managed which to miles's point i think probably is different in in a lot of ways and needs to be different in a lot of ways than the process that we use for the cpc just because of yeah the yeah i think that that makes that makes sense <laughs> Jordan, i'm kind of bouncing with excitement because I'm realizing we may be able to be the first people to dog food your starter charter. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And it would actually, I think, be really interesting to go through it and see, hey, does this starter charter work for working groups as well as for projects? Hey, what's the difference between a project and a working group? Um, and I think it will raise some really interesting questions about how we want to structure the foundation, if there is even 
a distinction between a project and a working group, um, I think is a really interesting meta question for the CPC. Hmm. That is an interesting uh, meta question. Um, I, th I think that could be, I mean, that's an issue we can file right now, which is like, you know, start, start dog fooding the, the starter charter, as you say, as mm -hmm. I, I like that name. Um, and, you know, um, and make sure um, we're, we're aligned on, on, on that and we can take that through the, um, the proposal process. In the next week or yeah, two. that makes sense. That that might help us to kind of crystallize our thinking for this group as well, just by working through that process. Cool. I like that. I like it, Miles. You're a man with some plans. Plans or opinions? I haven't decided which one. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. What do you think? You like that too? Yeah, it sounds good for me. Yep. Cool. Um. Let's see. Who else? Christian? I plus one that. Plus one. Richard? Maybe. Richard, if you're talking, you are muted. Be silent if you agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so something that I think um, like I, I would I would add as just kind of like general advice from how we've handled things in node in the past um, It doesn't mean we have to do it this way, but just kind of learnings Generally when we're talking about chartering something uh, a group usually is chartered in node when they already kind of have um, The influence in the area that they want to have authority over without having the authority a great example of this is the release working group, which actually the release working group was a team that was unchartered that pretty much owned the entire release pipeline for I think almost two and a half years before they chartered. And it was mostly chartered because they're just like, hey, um, this is completely delegated. No one is, you know, um, trying to, to undermine the authority of this group, but they don't actually have the authority. So we just kind of like put a stamp on it. Mm -hmm. um, at the time in which that happened, though, you know, that group already had extensive governance in place. It already had like kind of the cogs moving and everything working. Um, a, an example of an alternative is like the modules team has not been chartered. Um, and part of that has to do with the fact that the modules team has had a very hard time reaching consensus on things and has not been the most productive group. But also there's a high level question about whether or not, you know, what would that team own? And how would they own it and how to be like explicit about that is hard. And that's part of the reason why that uh, group has never been chartered. Um, then there's groups that, you know, ha have been chartered from like the start of, of their formation. So one of the things that we may want to do is draft out governance first before we work towards a charter and kind of have um, at the very least a high level overview of how we want to operate and we could work on a governance document within this repo and then make the proposal um, with a potential charter um, which would be more or less asking hey we want to like officially own this part and like kind of here's our process that we have in place mm -hmm. um, we should maybe within the group kind of come up with what we would like the governance to be and then the charter would kind of be the official stamp on that I, I see what you're saying. I mean, um, that, that frankly, it, it's unlikely that a charter will be granted to a group that doesn't have a, a like a, a process, a governance process um, that's identified because right now it is very ad hoc. Um, so. And, and the governance process can be fairly straightforward. We, we could, you know, like start from the governance doc over in the CPC, we could even just like copy paste that in a pull request and just tease it apart until we have something that looks like it works. But just like something that includes like, how do we manage changes in this repo? How do we manage ma membership? And then maybe something around like how we, how, how we decide who we, who we send. Like we should kind of have consensus in this group around those basics. And then we can draft a charter asking to kind of you know, have the authority to act on the governance that we've drafted. Mm -hmm. 
That makes sense. Um, so that just kind of um, brings a couple more uh, issues then to, to, to file and create to start tracking uh, to mind. Um, maybe an issue for um, some kind of governance, getting um, governance.md kind of boot, bootstrap doc. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, that's probably, that's probably the best place to start, I would imagine. Is that something we think that we can work on asynchronously? So this group is meeting, um, every two weeks. I think that's the max I would, I'm able to, to make progress on this particular, um, uh, work stream, um, in my, in my brain, but I certainly could, could spend, um, a few cycles asynchronously. Um, I'm curious about everybody else, like time-wise, do you think, um, you think we can, do folks here think they have the bandwidth to work on it async between now and then? Yep, I, I, if, uh, if someone else doesn't volunteer, I could help with drafting an initial governance, but my schedule is pretty slammed this week, um, but I can definitely asynchronously uh, review and suggest changes, uh, whatever people prefer. Cool. I, I, I'm, I think there's somewhere in my bookmarks full of crap, um, a template, um, to that I don't mind just throwing up as a, some spaghetti on a wall. Um, mm -hmm. the, the CPC governance.md and the TSC governance.md could be good places to start, um, as far as governance is concerned as well. All right. Well, I think um, I'm not sure that we have like uh, you know specific decisions that have been um, to to totally made here, but I think we have a direction that is feeling more exciting and more tr like likely to get traction. Um, I think we've made some we've had some great comments and thoughts on um, the requirements um, issues that Sindil opened and we can get started on um, a governance document with the intent to propose um, us a an official chartered working group um, and i think those those are these are things that we can start to work on and develop also in parallel too so that's great and i also want to just point out that um if i'm not mistaken the um next TC39 meetings are in New York in the very beginning part of October. So you know, maybe just about a month away. And um, then also the other one to bring up, I will not be able to be at next week's meeting, at, at the meeting in two weeks. I will be traveling to Japan, but the following week I will be at TPAC. Um, so I don't know if anyone else from this group will be at TPAC. If so, reach out. I'd love to hang out. Um, but otherwise, if there's um, specific W3C related thoughts that people have. Um, I can imagine things for the web incubator community group, especially around like import maps. Some of the stuff around namespaces may be of interest to people. Um, feel free to open an issue and at me or just to ping me privately. Um, and I'll be happy to help um, represent our foundation at that event um, if there's specific things that need representation. Um. So that uh, reminds me, because I, I will be there as well, and I just can't believe it's only two weeks away. Holy crap. Um, <laughs> do you want to, uh, would you be interested in like um, just writing a, because Richard and I last time we were talking about like doing some kind of um, call for, um, you know, just a heads up. You've got a couple people from the from the OpenJS Foundation family, essentially, who are going to be out at this event. Do you have any questions, or is there anything you'd like to hear about? You know, if we're happening, if you know, um, do you mind if uh, if folks if we kind of share that information more broadly and encourage folks to reach out if they have anything to you? I will be at TPEC as well. 
Yay! So maybe, actually, maybe, Jory, what could make sense, should we, if it's not too late, propose an open JSF uh, Birds of a Feather? I don't think it's too late. Um, I am less familiar with TPAC because it's going to be my first time. Um, Jory, would you be able to take the action item of proposing something like that? Yeah, I'm write it down right now. Um, a boff for open oh JSF. I've never heard it called a boff, but that's so cute. <laughs> boff for open JSF at TPAC. Um, yeah, I'll reach out to Angel and Corley um, at the W3C and, and make sure there's room, but I think that'd be fun. That would be so fun. Cool. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll add that in the, um, also add that in, the, in my update for tomorrow, my email. Cool. Okay, I think I have to drop early to be able to get to the meeting room for my next meeting. Anything else uh, time sensitive or specific we should chat about or are we good? No, I think we're good. Um, thank you so much, Miles. Loved, um, loved the conversation today. Um, so just for everybody else, the, it looks like our next meeting, um, barring you know anything too crazy, is um, September the 10th at uh, approximately 2 p.m. Eastern um, and we've got some homework to do between now and then but it sounds like good stuff seems like good stuff um, any other business before we close mm. All right. I'm taking that as a negatory um, I will um, post this up on YouTube and um, uh, make sure a recap gets in the uh, repository. That's a funny way to say that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks so much, Christian. Thanks, Bye -bye. Richard. Thanks, Sindil. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.